Maybe you also know that one person who always complains that they don't have enough money, although they're actually having a pretty good income. For a lot of people, the money they earn every month just runs through their fingers. Nothing is left at the end of the month and they literally live paycheck to paycheck. And that also means that they have to go to work because otherwise they cannot pay their bills. So to break through that vicious cycle, and yes, I call it a vicious cycle because it gives you no space to breathe and it makes you very dependent on your job, on your employer, on the market being stable. So to break through that cycle, we can implement a system, a system that helps us building wealth step by step by simply using more than one account. So in this video, I'll show you one possible way of implementing such a system and I'll start with a principle that will help Help us on our way and that principle is mental accounting have you ever found some money or received money as a gift and then you bought something from that money that you never would have bought from your own money sound familiar well that is one example for mental accounting mental accounting is a concept of behavioral science I first learned about it in Daniel Kahneman's book thinking fast and slow but it origins back to Richard Thaler who by the way won a Nobel Prize for economics and what it means is that we mentally organize our money in those different kind of boxes and we don't like to mix them up and this mental accounting can lead to wrong decisions or to bad decisions or let's rather say to decisions that don't serve you for example let's say you bought a ticket to the cinema and you thought the movie is going to be awesome but it turns out it isn't it's a really bad movie and all you want to do is leave but then you think in your head no I paid for this ticket now I have to stay until the end well the thing is you really don't because the money for the ticket it's already gone but now by sitting there and keep watching the movie you also keep paying with your precious time and that kind of scenario is called the sunk cost fallacy which simply means that we keep doing something because we think we already invested so much time or money or effort into it so that is one bad result that can come out of mental accounting but we can also use mental accounting to our advantage because this thinking in boxes can actually help us build wealth and we're simply doing it by using different accounts for different occasions so here's how now the first one will be an account for needs. You probably will already have at least one account, a checking account, where you receive your income. And from that account you pay all your bills like housing, Wi-Fi, your cell phone, food, insurances and maybe also charity. And this will be our first account, the needs account. An alternative for this needs account can be that you build an account just for your income, where you receive your income. And then you build a second account, a needs account, from where you pay your bills. The advantage here would be that you transfer for a certain amount every month and then you're not tempted to spend more than you have on this separate account. Another way would be to use this one just for your fixed costs so that they are already taken out of the equation of your income. Now the second account will be your account for saving and when I say savings I mean everything. I mean cash, I mean stocks, I mean bonds, I mean real estate if you have, I mean all the money and the assets that you like keep for yourself and obviously the more wealth you accumulate the more complex the system will become. I will talk about different scenarios in a minute, but for the savings account, it's really important that you don't pay anything from this account. So this one is only there to build up wealth. And this one can simply be another checking account or also any other kind of account that meets your needs. Now let's take a look at what the savings account can look like at different levels of wealth. Let's say at level one, you're just starting out or maybe you already saved up a couple of thousand dollars. In this case, the first thing you do is you open a second account, for example, a checking account. You start a recurring transfer from your needs account or your income account to that savings account. And then the first thing you do is you build up your emergency fund. Let's say, for example, you earn $4,000 a month and you want to save up three months of buffer. Then your first goal is to build up an emergency fund of $12,000. So you set up the recurring transfer once and then this emergency fund fills up over time. And while it is filling up, you can start to research and decide of how you want to invest your money afterwards. And for example, already open a brokerage account because then you will be at level two. Let's say level two is up to $100 thousand dollars in net worth. There you maybe opened already one brokerage account or several brokerage accounts where you invest in stocks and in bonds. I don't recommend single stocks because it's much harder to diversify. I would recommend a well diversified ETF instead. If you ask me yourself what is an ETF, I'll link a beginner's guide to investing here somewhere. And as you approach the 100k you might also consider other assets like real estate if you're into it or commodities or crypto or whatever. 
course it's always you 100% deciding on how you want to allocate your money. That's just my personal way of doing it. And then level three would maybe even approach a million in net worth. You could still absolutely stick to stocks and bonds if you want to. I know of a few people that would, but of course you could also look to diversify into real estate, into commodities, or at this point even private equity. And the reason is that if you start experimenting with new asset classes that are maybe a little riskier, it doesn't matter because the size of your portfolio is already very big and you can take a bigger risk because it's only like 10% of your portfolio and it won't bankrupt you if it goes sideways. And the third account that I recommend is the fun account. Maybe you also know that feeling when you go on a shopping spree, but afterwards you cannot really enjoy what you bought because of a bad conscience that you spent so much. Well, no more, because you're working hard. Now you're also working smart by implementing a system where you build up wealth step by step. You're entitled to treat yourself to something nice within your means, especially since we never know how long we're actually gonna live. So it's important important to also enjoy our life. So you can take, for example, five to 10% of your income and put it towards this extra fun account and then you spend that money ruthlessly. So this is not the account to grow, except when you're saving up for something very expensive. I personally also have a fun account and I've split it into two. One is for luxury things like, you know, clothes and handbags and jewelry. And the other account is for holiday. So then when I, example, want to book a flight or a hotel for my holidays, there's always going to be money on that account for that. So those the three basic accounts that I recommend and I also personally have. Depending on your individual situation, of course, there are many other options. For example, if you wanted to, you could open another account to pay off debt, or you can open up an education account either for yourself or for your children. You can also open a general account for your children. And I think once you dive a little bit into the planning and implementing at least two of those accounts, the needs account and the saving account, then other options will occur and the system you build will evolve over time. If you are asking yourself how you can spend less money in order to grow that savings account faster, I recommend this video next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.